Welcome to the Creators here at Sum City. Coming to you every Tuesday and Friday. Extended conversations that build community making for creators videos, by creators. Art, making what you make. Today on The Creators, Paul Baker Hernandez stepped into some city on his northeast tour away from his current home in Nicaragua. Paul's musical repertoire is based on listening and interpreting others, such as Chilean creator and activist Victor Hara. So we invite you to subscribe and give us a thumbs up. Well, you got to watch the show first. So let's get on with the show. Hi, folks. Welcome back to The Creators. Coming to you from some city in beautiful downtown Summersworth, New Hampshire, I'm Tom Jackson, and today uh, we have the honor of uh, Paul Baker Hernandez, who is currently on a tour uh, of the Northeast and uh, uh, playing some music and talking about uh, things that are going on down in the uh, country that he calls uh, his home and has for several years in Nicaragua. So uh, welcome to The Creators, Paul. Thank you very much, Tom. It's great to be with you. So nice and cool, I have to say. Nice, <laughs> cool, cool compared to uh, to Managua. downtown Managua. Yeah, it seems. Yeah, I would say. Um, so I, the, the the leadoff question uh, here on the creators is, uh, you know, that that term creator has mm. become uh, a fairly popular term, um, not only for creators of content that goes on. YouTube and, and Vimeo and so on, right? But uh, <clears throat> in reference to uh, a lot of different types of creators, so uh, are, are you a creator? And uh, you know, what does that word mean to you, if anything? Yeah, well, now I shall take five or ten minutes to think. Okay, <laughs> meantime, <laughs> no, it, no, I was delighted to hear that you called it the program, the creators, because I. It is true. I hadn't thought that, in fact, you do have that on videos and so on now, talking about creating. But I hadn't thought of it in that context so much. Um, for me, music is the creator. Yeah? Um, I'm not a... Uh, I think the wonder of music, for me at least, is that it... Um, you're not so much a creator, you're more a channel. Yeah. You, you, it creates you in the making of it, in the listening to it, and particularly the kind of music that I'm involved with, particularly in the context of um, the struggle for against oppression, the struggle for impoverished peoples, and so on. It's really the channel, the echoing of their voices, and particularly the voices, well, most of those folks, the impoverished ones, their voices are, are stifled or ignored. And increasingly over the years, it's become the voice of the earth herself, which is stifled and in, ignored indeed. So for me, it's like, I, I hadn't thought of it in these terms, it's you kind of resonate in, with the creation of life, essentially, um, echoing all of these dimensions. And only in that sense would I see myself as a creator. I mean, occasionally you come, one comes up with a song or something like that. But it's really, it's really the product of, well, so much. You know, the whole diatonic scale, who, who invented that, the de development of, of, of words, the development of poetry. And how does it go beyond all of that? Because for me, music is essentially really nonverbal, although it's a song. Many, uh, very often, yeah. Um, so it, it, I, I suppose at the end of the day, what I would say, it's, it's the silence of listening, the silence of beauty echoing through one that is the creative process, and in that sense, one is a creator. Yeah. So that's a bit of a long-winded answer, but... Uh, oh, it's a good, thoughtful answer. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I want to take a step back now and ask you, uh, you know, when when did you first start coming up with your own songs and uh, playing the, the guitar? Oh, well, own songs, not very much. I'm much more of a cover guy, um, except for one particular person, that is Victor Jara, the great Chilean. 
Um, I, I, I suppose, well, certainly you know, but I'm for, for those who don't know, Victor was a a wonderful poet, a singer-songwriter. He wrote magnificent songs about or on echoing the impoverished people, using that language again, of Chile. He's from Chile. And um, his music was two things about it. A, it was very powerful in the sense of protest song, yeah. But what made it completely unique and not protest in that narrow sense was its beauty. Yeah? So he, his songs were both immensely powerful for their social content and for their beauty. And for that reason, really, he was murdered, tortured and murdered during the 1973 coup when um, the United States, primarily with Kissinger and Nixon, overthrew the elected government of Salvador Allende in Chile and impo imposed or facilitated the dictator Pinochet. Yeah. And he was tortured in the most horrific way, broke his hands and his fingers, uh, beat him up and played Russian roulette with him. Yeah. And in fact, I wear this poncho in honor of Victor and all of those who died and were tortured in those days, and indeed in any days, as continues today, of course. But particularly Victor, they used to wear these in, in, on his uh, on his shows, you know, he would always wear a poncho. So um, that's really where most of my creativity has gone, uh, singing his songs, but also interpretate, <laughs> interpreting, <laughs> interpreting them into uh, singable English. It's unique, in fact. Right? And um, obviously you can't translate word for word, you have to make an interpretation. Right. And so that's really where most of my own creativity, well, could I hold on to that, thank you, David, has gone. Um, but at the same time, there are a few songs of my own, yeah. having said all of that. They're mostly comic songs, because comic songs are much easier to do. When I try to write serious songs, I get really turgid, you know, and sort of <laughs> sticky. And they're too much not listening, they're, they're not echoing, the crea they're, they're more trying to be a creator, trying to inflict on the art form my own personality, which I don't think that's what it's about. It's much more this listening and that echoing through. You know? and so is that, that how you kind of uh, describe your creative process? Is that listening and, and sort of channeling through? Um, or if not, you know, some people in, in their creative process are very, very disciplined uh, <laughs> and, you know, they'll, <laughs> they'll set times uh, every day or, mm -hmm. or whenever for, uh, for sitting down and, and engaging in that process. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Others, you know, rely on inspiration strictly. Yeah. Uh, how about you? Yeah, I mean, I was, I think it was Steinbeck who used to do that, wasn't it? And he would write a set and set number of words a day and he would end off no matter where he was. He might be in a purple patch, but he'd still end. That seems very, uh, I'm a seat of the pants guy, right? And uh, th for example, those interpretations into English of Victor's, yeah? Uh, they came out of, the, out of the ether. It was so extraordinary. And they hardly had to be worked on at all. Talking of purple patches, yeah? And since that time, I really haven't written any other interpretations. I'm trying to work on one at the moment, but it's sort of a labor, whereas at that moment, it was more like inspiration. Um, no, I mean, I'm not really a musician in the sense that the defining role in my life, if you like, I'm, because I got involved in the struggles for social justice, both in Scotland, where, where I'm originally from, and now, particularly in Latin America, um, that's you have to be an organizer, yeah, and like a bit like Joe Hill, perhaps, you know, that you're an organizer who sings rather than the singer who organizes. Mm -hmm. yeah? And so most of my sort of working life has been dedicated to organizing. And by that I mean delegations coming to Nicaragua, organizing, you know, meetings with political people, with community people, cooperatives, that kind of stuff. Particularly now with the environment, because Nicaragua has actually a phenomenal um, uh, development of, within the environmental context, which is part of what I want to talk about up here, because of course um, the United States is leading the the charge over the cliff, really, with withdrawing from the Paris Climate Accord. Yeah? Um, 
So and then the music, it's curious, because Victor in particular was, he, I met him in the music after he was killed, yeah? And the way that we met was that um, Chilean exiles came to Scotland, and I can still remember their names. They formed um, a group to sing, and they sang Victor Jara, particularly Vilef Para too, but particularly Victor. And they had no English, and we had no Spanish. And they, Gabriel, um, Margarita, Carlos, and Giovanna, and they um, transformed our approach, when I say our, a whole generation, I think, um, around 1970, late 70s, mid-70s, um, from this part of the world, looking to the south, instead of charity, which is where we had come, you know, we have plenty, they don't have so much, let's give them some beans, yeah, kind of approach, in, in very crude terms. We, they made us see, no, this is about justice. We have been tortured, we have been exiled. Gabriel had been so badly tortured that he didn't, he'd given up the names of some of his friends, just like, you know, I might say, well, I was with this Tom guy, you need him, not, you know, leave me alone. And um, he, then he was exiled, he had never knew what happened to his friends. That was because we were looking for social justice, we were looking for food for children, we were looking for a decent home, a dignified life, yeah? That is nothing to do with charity. That is the right of every human being. And so they transformed um, the organizing as well as the music. And that was the tremendous part of it. So it's um, complex, as usual. Right? But so primarily, I'm, I'm, I still like to call myself a musician. And music has always been central, you know, but not in the sense of a full-time musician. Yeah. Well, I want to talk... Uh more about Nicaragua, but before we get to that, uh, I'm wondering if you would honor us with uh, a song right now. <laughs> oh, no. Tell us a little bit about the song here. Well, uh, having talked about Victor Jara, yeah, um, there's a wonder one. As I said, the wonderful thing about his music is that it's both very passionate, very you know, in your face, and also very um, beautiful. And this is particularly lovely version, a lovely little song. It's about a little boy, his name is Louis, or he's called um, Luchin. Luchin, and he's actually got a horse. So, of course, one always thinks this must be a wealthy little boy, but not at all. He's got a horse because his mom and dad are, um, that's how they make their living. They're, they, you know, they're carters, they clear up the rubbish, they take whatever you want carted around. And, you see where, and still see that in Managua today, actually. And um, the, the little boy Luchin, uh, the house, <coughs> his house was made of cardboard or, you know, just rough stuff. And in one half of the house was the mom and dad and all the other children. I mean, a house, it was basically a one-room shack. Yeah? And in the other half, there was, at night, there was Luchin and the horse because to avoid the horse wandering off and so on, and, um, or being stolen. And there became a big old storm, and the house was washed away, and um, Victor and Joan, his wife, took in Luchin. And Victor realized the, way, the, the actual reality of the little guy's life, you know, and wrote this song as a result. And it has a lovely chorus. He, he, he talks about his little rag ball, a ball made of rags wrapped around with string, you know. Um, still see that in Nicaragua. And his cat and his dog, his other big pals, and his horse. And uh, I, this one is one of the ones I've done in English interpretation as well. So. Hope it's going to stay in tune. It's the changing climate, eh? Frágil como un volantín En lo techo de barranca Jugaba el niño al luchín Con sus manitos morradas Con la pelota de trapo Con el gato y con el perro El caballo lo miraba 
fragile as a tiny kite, flying high above the rooftops, Luchin playing in the mud, his little hands a mass of chilblains, playing with his little rag ball. With his friend the cat, his friend the dog. The old horse stands there, smiling gently. Well, the horse was like a great big toy. Standing in the tiny cabin. Seemed to give him so much joy. Be Lucin's close companion, playing with his little rag ball, with his friend the cat, his friend the dog. The old horse stands there, smiling gently. Si hay niños como Lucin. Que comen tierra y gusano. Abramos toda la aula. Para que vuelen como pájaro. Con la pelota de trapo. Con el gato y con el perro. Y también con el caballo. If there are children like Lucin, left with only mud and worms to eat, why don't we open all the cages so that like little birds they can fly away free? Free with the little rag ball, with his friend the cat, his friend the dog, and with the old horse too. Why not? Beautiful. Yeah, it's a super song. Apologies for the accompaniment. The guitar has gone out of tune, so I'll have to fiddle about tuning it while we're here. But yes, I mean, that's a classic of, you see how completely passionate it is, and, but at the same time, how beautiful it is. Mm. And I think that, to me, I have this little, you know, I tend to sign myself, Paul, you know, whatnot, in peace, justice, and, you know, human rights, whatever, peace, justice, and beauty. And I think that is where the real creativity comes through, you know, that... Um, the, the echoing, the celebration, there's no real words for it, the, the listening to, the revealing of within oneself and through the, through the art form or through words, through music, through actions, through dance, beauty. Because that's what our life has so been... We spend our time, when you think about it, we're looking in our little me phones. I don't even call them iPhones anymore. They're me phones, right? We're looking in these little <laughs> me phones practically all the time nowadays. And uh -huh. you know how it's there. It's this exquisite, exquisite, um, just mind bogglingly beautiful, especially here in, in New Hampshire, especially right at this time, you know, as the, as, the leaf, as the leaves begin to turn and so on. And the sky, you know, you just think, how can we not see that? But we are increasingly to the the selfiedom, you know, the self. We have essentially a selfish society. It's selfish, but it's selfie in that sense of losing that contact with that which makes us resonate with beauty, that makes us creators. Yeah. Absolutely agreed. Um, there's another thing that our society here tends to lose contact with uh, and it's not actually so new um, you know I think a lot of times in in this country 
people are a little bit, uh, or many people are, are not really all that aware of you know things that are going on in other countries, mm -hmm. uh, which you know may or may not have some sort of U.S. influence uh, on them. Um, <laughs> I like the main nod. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and um, part of your reason for uh, being on this tour, as I understand it, is mm -hmm. to, uh, uh, to talk with people here in the States. And I think especially in a time like this when, you know, all the news is Trump, Trump, Trump uh, related, um, mm -hmm. we certainly have not heard a whole lot up here. Uh, about what's going on in Nicaragua these days, uh, mm -hmm. and probably what we have heard is uh, uh, skewed at best. So, um, can you tell us, you know, what uh, what kind of message are you uh, uh, giving to uh, to your audiences related to what's going on in Nicaragua? And uh, you know. yeah, well, we have actually been living through um, a very torrid and terrible time, actually. Um, again, for those who don't know, there was the we got rid of the Somoza dictatorship, the dynasty, um, in 1979. There was a coming together of different forces into what became known as the Sandinista Front from um, the uh, nationalist hero Augusto Sandino, who got rid of the U.S. Marines way back in the early 30s and then got murdered for his troubles. And, the Somoza dictatorship took over um, with the huge backing of the North. I like to say the Northern Power. I don't like to say, but I have to say the Northern Powers, not just the United States. You know, we were all in it. Britain was part of it too, and would be even more today if it possibly could be. Um, the United States dominates. Um, so <clears throat> intervention has been our experience for ever since well, f ever since 1823 when the Monroe Doctrine was, you know, nobody messes with the backyard. Central America, Latin America is our backyard. Okay, So um, that came to a head when the, <coughs> Somoza, the Somoza dictatorship was thrown out in 79 by this revolutionary force and Reagan and Bush and those guys helped organize, um, backed and organized the counter-revolution, and which became known as the Contra and the big old Contra uh, Iran drug scandal and Oliver North, all of that stuff, right? Okay, so that was horrific. I was there in 85, and I remember up in the north of Nicaragua, there was these posters of little children who had been a, a, a day center all of them under five, who had been massacred by the Contra. Yeah? And the whole modus operandi of the Contra was to terrorize the population yeah? by that kind of thing. And so teachers would be killed, catechists would be killed, social workers, everybody who, nurses, people doing community stuff were, were murdered in the most horrible ways. Well, that has reemerged in Nicaragua in this last period, from basically the middle of April. It's, Died down again now. What people like myself, woolly liberals, you know, we, we <laughs> laughingly used to call ourselves sandalistas, yeah, because we were like the sandinistas, but we were kind of pseudo revolutionary and uh, pseudo chase, as it were. Um, we took this kind of lovely, after the revolution happened and the war was over uh, in 1990, the Frente lost power, but um, came back again in 2007, and in all that period since the 1990 when they lost the elections, the contra, the against the revolution, and the, con the compa, the people with the revolution, were working together, particularly in the countryside, particularly in the barrio. My own wife was a guerrillera, in, and she was working with people who had been fighting against her during the, the, the war. And so it seemed all hunky-dory and nice and cozy. We had forgot, at least I had forgotten in my woolly liberal way, that there was this hard core of people who hated Sandinismo, who were determined to reimpose um, a structure which would benefit them as the local representatives of the international uh, corporations or you know whatever it might be, um, essentially uh, selling out the country, we would say 
for their own personal gains and to maintain uh, U.S. hegemony. Yeah? And so what has happened? 2007 onwards, the Frente came back into office and free health care w- w- became the thing. We, free health care, imagine, in little Nicaragua, which is the second most impoverished country in the Western Hemisphere. Free education, land reform, infrastructure reform, Tremendous emphasis on women, on in particularly the women of the countryside. Um, uh, an attempt, and indeed a, a relatively successful attempt, to get practically 50% men and women in, in government. Yeah? Most of, in fact, the majority of, of ministers in the government are women. Look at our attempts at democracy here and in Britain, you know, same thing. And then, wonderfully, the environmental work. Um, 90 percent um, uh, food sovereignty, producing food from within our own country, and by 2020, something like 90 or 95 percent of energy from renewable resources. So all of this was developed, and then this terrible, um, kind of like the bursting of this, this terrible, like how would you say that you, when you vomit. Um, not vomit, but that terrible yellow liquid, uh, you know? That bile. Bile, exactly. Bile coming on. And terrible things happened, just like the Contra. And though, because I'd been there during the Contra, and because of Chile and what they did to Victor Jara, exactly that same vicious, horrifically vicious. And so that had been happening. And at the same time, there was an extraordinary explosion of social media and international media um, claiming it was all done by the government. The killing was all being done by the government. And for people like myself and so many of us from my generation who came into the movement because of Chile and then saw, you know, Guatemala and Honduras and El Salvador and Haiti and the rest of it, it seemed part of that pattern. And we could not understand how The Guardian, for example, or Democracy Now!, or even Amnesty International could be fooled by this, as we see it. Yeah? And so that's been happening. But now, the, and so the attempt was uh, uh, to really to get rid of Ortega, the, the, the president, who was elected with over 60 or 60 or 75 percent. 70 percent, um, very recently. And the attempt was to get rid of him and... Uh, but that seems to be been quelled. But it's like we're sitting on a time bomb even still, you know? Mm. And, um, for example, my own son, our own son, my, he's uh, British as well as Nicaraguan, he's 20 now, and he went back to Britain because things were that tense, you know? Mm. As he was a student, some of the students were involved in the struggles, and. That, that sort of sitting on a time bomb tension seems to be uh, uh, going around. It's like a virus or something that seems to be going around. Mm-hmm. Um, in in what sense? In well, context. I mean, I think that there's there's a number of countries where. Mm-hmm. Would you, you say know, the same of here? Uh, I I do think that you know it's uh, uh, it's definitely changed. I mean, you know, yeah. there's there's a stronger division among you know, sectors of the population mm-hmm. than I've ever seen in my lifetime. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So uh, mm. we'll leave it at that for now. Uh, <laughs> I'm wondering if you, uh, if you would be willing to uh, honor us with uh, uh, another song. Well, I would, except for the guitar going out of tune. Tell you what I'd like to do. Um, as part of my, how would you say, creative process, uh, I came from a classical background originally. I don't play classical music, but I, I came from particularly a Beethoven, Beethoven, Bach, that period, and particularly Beethoven. And for those of you who know about Beethoven, you know, it's not just da-da-da-dum, da-da-da-dum. He had this amazing chamber music, as we call it, particularly sonatas for uh, uh, solo piano or string quartets for stringed instruments, and four of them and so on. And... Um, his his music at that period, the latest period of his life, just in the last ten years or so, is regarded as the most, um, still today, as the most um, fundamentally in touch with what who we really are. And when you listen to it, it heals you and creates you from within. Okay, and but the thing that is known all over the world 
and we even used it in Nicaragua as a, a campaign song, is the Ode to Joy. Okay? Now, it's really important to emphasize that joy for Beethoven, and the guy who wrote the poem, Schiller, wasn't just having a good old fun time, you know, it wasn't joy, joy, okay, you hoo um, It's actually Ode to Joy as the harbinger of universal peace and brotherhood, sisterhood, okay? So that's really important. And so given this tremendous movement within Nicaragua um, towards um, a, a, a healing, uh, I like to say, you know, MAGA here, okay, everybody knows what MAGA means, you know? I'm not even going to say it because I hate it so much, right? It's so infantile, yeah? and what we're seeing is it means isolationism, it means withdrawing from things like the Paris Climate Accords, which everybody else, except for Nicaragua, practically signed, and Nicaragua only didn't sign it because it wasn't, wasn't sufficiently serious, and now we are signed to it. And so what we're talking about in Nicaragua is mega, so make Earth green again. All right. So within that context, I've written an ode to, ode to Earth based on, would you believe, Ode to Joy. And everybody knows the tune, so we can all hum along. Okay. So this is how it goes. <coughs> I have it in Spanish and English, but obviously I, I don't have the Spanish with me anyway. Earth is one, she is our glory, life and hope, beauty and peace. Caring for each one of her children, no matter race, gender, color or creed. But now our mother is close to dying, beaten, violated, ravaged, raw. Now is our moment, O oh sisters and brothers, come to her rescue as never before. Oceans are surging, the sun it is searing, forests and animals cower in fear. Build the great dream now, O oh sisters and brothers, singing, creating the future that's near. Women, men and children, all races and nations, weaving our joy, our tears, our blood. Tomorrow is now, O oh, beloved family. Join hands with us now, united in love. And so, what, I'm, what we are, have done, actually, there's a wee college up in, um, in Vermont, or across in Vermont, isn't it, from here? Um, Green Mountain College, mm -hmm. and they've done a version of that. And there's actually, <laughs> it's really funny, there's a, a bank in Spain which used uh, the Ode to Joy <coughs> as a sort of, what you call these things, a flash mob. They pretend it was, you know, they were actually orchestra and people in the choir, but they were all dressed in civvies and they all happened to turn up here. And so we put the two of them together. The, the Green Mountain Choir did a version of this with a bit of harmony, and then we added in taking out the bank bits, but just the, where the, the violins and stuff in common with this lovely, amazing tune, and then adding bits and pieces. So it's another video, yeah? And um, what I'm hoping is that we'll be able to produce a whole bunch of versions of that reggae you know, and other kinds, jazz, obviously, mm. and all kinds of versions of it, and eventually work it so that we would be able to get a, 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 a global choir together, using modern techniques, obviously, so you and me, we could be singing it here in Summer, Summer, Summer Worth, is that? Summersworth. Some, Beautiful uh, downtown Summersworth. Summersworth, that's right, I keep saying Summersworth. Yeah. Summersworth. And then, you know, somebody could be singing it in Timbuk, Timbuktu, and we could all be singing it together in... Um, I was thinking humming, imagine that, the whole world humming, mm. vibrating, yeah. because that's the universal musical language. Everyone can hum it. And then in each language area, English, Spanish, Afrikaans, people would be singing their own version. That's the great vision, okay, to have the whole world, because to, we have to become citizens of the world, you know, this is not the time to withdraw from anything. 
mm. like talking to British <laughs> folks pulling out of Europe, right? This is that we have to get together. Right. Because we th we're, we're screwed otherwise. We really are. Uh, yeah, I, I hear that for sure. So one, um, we like to say one planet, one people. Okay. Nice. So before we wrap up, um, you mentioned uh, that you would like to um, have us include a, a video uh, that you produced and uh, uh, you send a link to that to me. Yeah. Um, can you tell us just a little bit about that video? Well, first of all, it's not, I, I, I think you would be ashamed of it in, since you're a professional video maker. But it was just a backyard video. But we call it a barrio video. We live in a, an impoverished neighborhood in Managua. And I have this place where, just a little room where I work, and the chickens and the kids and the dogs and everybody else are outside in one microphone and an old computer, right? But it doesn't matter in the sense because it's, it's actually using um, the old song about um, the union maid, Woody Guthrie's song. Oh, you can't scare me. I'm sticking to the union, right? But it goes, oh, you, uh, how does it go? Um, Come and join us, now we're sticking to the planet. We're sticking to the planet, we're sticking to the planet. Come and join us, now we're sticking to the planet. We're sticking to the planet, we won't let Earth die. That's how that goes, okay. And then the verses are all about Trump and Pruitt. Because, of course, Pruitt was the, mm. the, the thing, you know, the director of the, of the Environmental Protection Agency. The right. day the song came out on YouTube, he was resigned, so it, it, ah. I mean, it was tremendously powerful. But it really, it, it, it's really interesting because it's about out-tweeting Trump. And uh, I, I mentioned about the me phones, right, and how we tend to be swallowed up by them. They, they suck out our, our, our creativity. They are immensely creative, mm -hmm. and they do give us the power to transform the world, actually, if we use them as tools rather than toys. And in this case, the, the, the thrust of the song is, um, get in the fight, flood his Twitter site, that is Trump's Twitter site, um, and heal our glorious earth. Now, that's how it ends, actually. So it'll be, we're, I'd be really grateful if you would show it. And please excuse the quality. Come and join us, now we're sticking to the planet. We're sticking to the planet, we're sticking to the planet. Come and join us, now we're sticking to the planet. We're sticking to the planet. We won't let us die. Come on now, grab your phone, don't just sit there and moan. Come gird your loins, light up your fire. Together let's lose our collective ire. These phones give us such power. Our tweet T rump in his own power. Join the cell phone strike. Put Pruitt on his bike. And watch the whole earth flower. Come and join us. Now we're sticking to the planet. We're sticking to the planet. We're sticking to the planet. Come and join us, now we're sticking to the planet. We're sticking to the planet. We won't let Earth die. Well, it's goodbye, Mr. Pruitt. We're really gonna make you rue it. Goodbye to you and your big oil friends. So long, you guys, this is where it all ends. How could you be so stupid to make the whole world putrid? Well, you're for the dump with palty rum while we make our seas pellucid. Come and join us, now we're sticking to the planet. We're sticking to the planet. We're sticking to the planet. Come and join us, now we're sticking to the planet. We're sticking to the planet. We want to let Earth die. At real Donald Trump's a perfect fool, the emperor of misrule, disemboweling Paris and the EPA, we're here to tell him there's hell to pay. As the people's war gets worse, he's out sprinkling his golf course, but he's missed his putt, mind on his butt, and his stormy Daniel's curse. Come and join us, now we're sticking to the planet, sticking to the planet, we're sticking to the planet. 
Come and join us, now we're sticking to the planet, sticking to the planet. We won't let Earth die. You women have really got him going. He's too stupid to be annoying that his gropes and grabs would give him crabs as the truth comes out in the ribs and the drabs. That magazine style spanking has got the whole world um winking. Don't he rump the square, cries our delighted choir, and gets the laughter cranking. Come and join us, now we're sticking to the planet, sticking to the planet, we're sticking to the planet. Come and join us, now we're sticking to the planet, sticking to the planet. We won't let Earth die. Well now, while with laughter we may be groaning, let's get down to that phoning. For while Earth is frying, T-Rump seems trying to bring us all to the point of dying. So here's an end to all the mirth now. Let's give our anger birth now. Get in the fight. Flood his Twitter site and heal our glorious earth now. All right. We have been talking with Paul Baker Hernandez, musician, activist, uh, truth teller. Uh, what, what else do we... <laughs> creator. L Definitely a creator. Listener, perhaps. As well. Listener, I think. is. Perhaps, listener. I think that really is at the heart of... I have often friends would say, I wish I were a musician, and you, uh, and you think, well, really, the most creative person is the, is the one who truly listens. Yeah. However, that respond, however that resonates with his particular, or her particular being. So I would like to add lis listener, or how would you say, stumbling listener, attempting listener, because oh. none of us are there. Yeah. That's an excellent point, mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, Thank you so much for, for being here today on The Creators. Thank you for inviting me. Thanks, and thank you for the wonderful program. I think it's tremendous. Folks, uh, if you have not yet uh, subscribed, uh, please do so, and uh, give us a th thumbs up if you like what you're seeing and hearing, uh, and we will see you again next time on The Creators.